Hello and welcome to a new video about safety. This time we are going to talk about a sudden pressure and or temperature rise because of oxidation or reaction yeah? or otherwise called explosion. We're talking about the boom, okay? So, this needs to be prevented except if we produce weapons. However, we are producing machinery, so we need to prevent the explosion. Okay. Now, let's have a look what an explosion might cause. Yeah. We need something which is reacting, usually oxidation, and we need, for oxidation, we need oxygen. Yeah. Oxygen is natural in our atmosphere, yeah. So usually we are talking about some mixture between air, standard air, and some burnable gas or dust. Okay. Now let's first talk about uh, gas. Usually we have around 21% oxygen, yeah, and you know there must be a certain leveling between the burnable material and the oxygen. Uh, there, must be, there must be enough oxygen that this burning, fast burning, can happen. Uh, and there need also be enough, enough burning material that this burning can happen. So there need to be a certain ratio between oxygen and burnable material that this is really going well. Yeah? We can have a look at, at uh, a triangle. Yeah? So if this here is the burning, burning material yeah? and here we have the concentration of some inert gas. Inert gas is a type of gas which is very... it's not... you know it's fulfilled. Yeah? It does not react. Yeah. So here we have zero percent of this burnable gas. Here we have zero percent of this inert gas. Inert gas, and this is burnable. Yeah. And if we have zero zero, we have around twenty one percent oxygen, air, pure air. Yeah. And here we do have then the oxygen level is dropping. The more inert gas, the less oxygen we have, the more the more burnable gas, the less oxygen we have. And if we have inert gas and burnable gas, we also have less oxygen, of course. Yeah? So this this is the oxygen. So here we have 20% oxygen. And, and here we have, I don't know, 18% and, and 16% and so on and we're going down, down, down with the oxygen concentration. Yeah? And within a certain area here, this is the area where an explosion might happen, okay? If we are above this level, we simply do have too much inert gas inside so that there is no explosion. If we are above this level here, we simply have too less oxygen left, even if the burnable gas is quite high, we have too less oxygen left, there is no explosive mixture. Yeah? If we are below here, we have too less burnable material, it's also no explosion. So within this triangle, the explosive triangle, yeah, there is an explosive atmosphere possible. Hmm? Yeah, I just wrote here burnable gas. Yeah? Of course, it's different from gas to gas. Eh? How good is it distributed in air and so on? There are databases for this type. Eh? They are not complete, of course. Eh? Often, 
especially if you're talking about tasks afterwards, often you have to try. Yeah? Often it's just knowledge. So, and within this explosive area, there is somewhere, it's just a point now, an optimal point, stoichiometric mixture. I hope I write stoichiometric, stoichiometrisches ratio. This should be a line also. This is the ratio where we have a perfect situation. We have just enough oxygen to blow up perfect. Okay. Here I would go to the highest possible pressure. Uh, uh, explosion may reach. Yeah? And if we're talking about hydrocarbonates, yeah? so fossil fuels or something like this, yeah? then we have the, the highest pressure we can reach are 8 to 10 bars. Maximum explosion pressure. Okay? This stoichiometric ratio we usually try to reach in a combustion engine. There we want to really use the, the oxygen in the air and put in enough fuel, distribute this fuel in a stoichiometric ratio that we can make a big boom. Okay? In our application, since we're talking about safety now, we're not going to want to reach this. Yeah? We usually try to stay outside this, this triangle. So that's gas. Hmm? Gas is usually quite easy yeah? because you know gas is usually distributed fine over over the air and so on. It, it's pretty much developed. Huh? Now let's talk about dust because also dust particles, if they are burnable, yeah? then we might reach a situation where we have enough dust in the air yeah, distributed so well that we also have a very flammable mixture yeah, and this dust explosion yeah, possible. Usually dust sizes, the dust sizes should be lower than 0 0.5 millimeters, yeah, then they can stay airborne, yeah, distribute themselves and so on. Yeah. So this is this is uh, on dust side. Yeah. The problem with dust is that the distribution in air is not that easy that easy to to, to understand yeah. because it's simply dust. You know it it's, if there is no movement in the air it will slowly come down, cover the areas and so on and then somebody is moving through or a little bit there is a little wind and, and you can reach locally an explosive atmosphere yeah? because the distribution is simply not that equal. Yeah? So the dust density uh, is usually a measure of how explosive this thing is. Yeah? But like I said it's not that easy to, to, to really calculate this dust density in grams by square per cubic meter or whatever. Yeah? So there is not a clear point. There's not such a line like this, since simply because the distribution might not be even. Okay? So uh, Dusts are usually dangerous. Hmm? Dusts are usually dangerous. Uh, how might a dust might start to burn? Yeah? Well, there are hot surfaces. It's a hot surface. This a dust dust makes this even worse. You know, if you have a heat sink somewhere or something like this and it's covered by dust, it cannot radiate the heat as good as possible and 
the hot surface will get hotter. This does not help. Yeah? So if dust is covering some heat sink, yeah, it usually can get dangerous. Yeah? Then also a very static electricity We all know the effect. We are rubbing some uh, plastic part, yeah, and we feel it suddenly how our hairs rise, yeah, static. Yeah? Or we we buy new sneakers, sneak around, yeah, touch somewhere, and suddenly poof, there's a flash, yeah, pa, 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 flash, high temperatures can ignition. There can be the ignition of a dust explosion, yeah, if this. And also the dust particles, they are, if they are moving, yeah, they are touching each other, they are ripping, they are rubbing on each other, so there might be static electricity and there is self-ignition. There is the chance of self-ignition. Okay? Static electricity and of course there are also mechanical, mechanical sparks. No. If you hit with the hammer somewhere, you see sometimes ping, a little spark and so on. Mechanical sparks might also be the source of ignition. Okay? And glowing embers. Glowing embers, glue nester. Yeah. No glowing embers. Like I said, is there a hot surface? Yeah? There is a hot surface. Yeah? The dust is covering this hot surface. It's even getting hotter. And then suddenly, because there is lack of, of, of oxygen, the dust will just start to glow. Yeah? Not, it will not burn. It will just glow a little bit. Slowly. Waiting there. For a chance, and then suddenly you have a little bit wind of you de-dusting this, yeah? and suddenly this glowing amber emerges because now we have enough and boom, yeah, ignition. Yeah? These are dangers in dust. Yeah? It looks everything looks perfect. Does not even look if it's something, and then you dig in. Dust is spreading, whoosh. It's dust, guess everybody knows it's dangerous. Yeah? Dust is even more dangerous, I would say. Yeah? Uh, so what can we do about this? Yeah? Especially these glowing embers. Uh, we can have a look yeah, we can measure, for instance, the carbon monoxide concentration. If the carbon monoxide concentration is rising in the area, yeah, we have a pretty high chance there is somewhere a glowing amber. Because, you know, carbon monoxide is not a complete oxidation, because then it would be carbon dioxide. Yeah? So it looks like there is some oxidation ongoing with two less oxygen, yeah? glowing embers. Okay. If we are reaching these glowing embers, we maybe flood the area with some inert gas, some very lazy gas, which will simply get, this, get the, the oxygen away, yeah? and we might be able to, to extinguish the glowing amber there. Yeah? And then we have constructive chances, uh, so that we, even if it's explosive, then phew, should explode. Yeah. There are flaps and so on, which will reduce the, the power of the explosion then. Okay. The static electricity here, this is especially a topic if we are, you know, a lot of dusts, a lot of materials, are transported in a pneumatic way with a blower or something like this. There is a, a tube 
and we just blow the material through when it's transported. There is a big chance of static electricity there because there's a lot of friction, a lot of rubbing and so on. Static electricity. So this is how an explosion might occur. Reach an explosive mixture between burnable material, dusts or gases and air. Then we have the chance that we do have a sudden oxidation or reaction process with high rise of temperature and or pressure. An explosion. explosion. Okay? How we might prevent an explosion? Yeah? What techniques are there and in which order we have to use them? Yeah? We will talk about in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.